Hey folks, welcome. This is um, the recording. It's on for Design 300. It's our lecture for Thursday, September 30th, and we are on a Google Meet for those of you who are on with us right now. And um, so here we go. Let's let's just go in to see what we're working on. Again, we're doing flooring on slabs next week we're going to do flooring on joists and in many ways they're similar in many ways they're different and remember we're talking about flooring systems so often when we talk about flooring we we think of the the top layer the part that we all see and touch and feel whether it be carpet or tile or linoleum or concrete um that's just a part of the system. The system is made up of lots of different parts. And um, we're going to use some Revit today to show a detail and get you used to working with those things. We'll get the recording up for this in a little bit. Um, we've talked about our YouTube. We've talked about our reading list. We'll probably come back to these in a little bit. But I want to go over how to get an image in you've done that you did that last week you you put an image in of a concrete slab and maybe some rebar and some stem wall and i mentioned that you're not really allowed to do that if you're in a professional place unless you have licensing rights to those images and um and i will say many police places ignore that and um, if that's where you work and that's what they do, you should just know that you're that you're violating somebody's licensing intellectual property rights. But we're not going to teach it that way for sure. So we're going to teach you the most professional way to do it, which is to import it and then do your own thing with it. And you'll find that usually you'll want to be making some changes to that image to match more exactly what you do. So that's what we're going to do today. So I've got my VMware open. Remember, I demonstrate on VMware. Actually, at uh, the computer that I'm doing our lectures on, I do not have Autodesk or Microsoft on it. I've just got VMware. So I'm doing this as many of you might be doing it. I've got a little advantage that I have a gigantic screen. Uh, screen number two, and I have a pretty good laptop size screen. I think I've got a 16 inch screen and a 32 inch screen. So it does help. Big screens are a help. But here we go. I'm going to show you how to take um, the image out of your resource file. I've downloaded it and put it into the Revit, which I've also downloaded. But I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to click on it, right click, download, click. And there's the file I'm going to use. And all I really need to do right now is I'm gonna hold my left mouse button down. I'm on a Windows machine and drag it in and it's gonna open up. And you'll see that there's that, there's the sheet that it's gonna go on. And of course you'll change the name and it's nice to have it in capitals. I'm not going to make a big deal about it. Okay, so now I need to get this uh, this image into there. And remember what we did last time. Images don't just go on your piece of paper. We make a new view. View. And it's called the drafting view. So there's our drafting view. And this one is going to be lab on grade Flooring detail. And of course, I spelt that all wrong because there we go. That looks a little bit better. And it's a one to one scale, which you can call it custom at a scale factor of one. And here we go. I've got it. Now, now I've got my view sitting here. And remember, it makes a new little thing in your little browser down here that shows you all the views of that. And a little later on, I'm going to show you a, a, a file that has hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of them. 
So here we go. I'm ready to go. And, and I can actually, I've downloaded this. I can actually hold my mouse button down, left mouse, and bring it in. Uh, what is that doing? No, I just... That's really weird. Uh, let me see. I that doesn't usually happen. I don't know what's up with that. I can always just go in and do my insert, but I want to show you that you in there. I don't know why that's doing that. Oh, because I downloaded the wrong one. There we go. What I want to down. I'm being sloppy. I'm not doing the right thing. It's trying to open itself up inside of itself. So let me go back to my slab on gray. I got to put my picture in there. That's what the problem was. I was trying to put a file inside of a file. So I put my picture in here. There it is. And left click. And I can zoom in on it. And this time. It's going to take up that whole 11 by 17 page, and I don't want it to go all the way to the edge, but I'm going to make it, I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to make it 14 inches wide. That's a good amount. And I'm ready to go with it. That's really cool. Okay, so it's going to be the right size. Now, the trick is, how do I get all... I don't want to draw every single one of these pebbles and every single one of these lines. I'm going to draw over it. Um, and there are some tools that help us do that. And they're in the annotate. They're, they're drawing tools. And it's called a region, which if you know AutoCAD or some other one, they call it a hatch. And so we're going to call it a region. And it's going to be filled. Filled region. And when I click on it, the drawing tools come up. So here's my drawing tool for a rectangle. And I'm just going to trace a rectangle over the top. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a thing. And I can zoom in on it more if I want to get it a little bit more perfect. Let's try that again. Let's see how to start right about at that corner right there. And go down to about this corner over here. And then it says, what do you want to fill that region with? And if you click the little button, there's tons of things. And this happens to be Earth. So if I click Earth, it'll put that Earth hatch in there for me. So I'm going to do my green button to finish that particular hatch. And lo and behold, I've got Earth. Now, this is common for it to be even like this. I can rotate it and stuff. This is the most common way that you see it. So, I know they have it as an angle over here, but this is okay. So let me do another one for my next one. It's gravel. And I'm going to, again, do a rectangle. And look, it'll match right up. Then I can get right over to over here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If I'm off a little bit, nobody's really going to care. There we go. And this is gravel. This is the sign for gravel. And if you read it over here, it says granulated capillary break. Well, that means gravel. There we go. Somebody's being very fancy. And then I have to click this check mark. Check. Done. There, I've got gravel. Move down here. Now, these are just lines, and it's some sort of mud slab or compacted earth. That's compacted earth for us. So let's try that again. Annotate. There we go. And I'm going to put another rectangle in. And I'm not going to worry about these weird little breaky lines. They're really not necessary, so I'm going to ignore them until I get really good at drawing. There we go. And those look like diagonal lines. And I don't know if that's up or now. Let's try up. I don't know. It doesn't matter, actually. Yeah. There we go. This needs to be something. Now, here, I'm going to have a black solid fill. Let me try a black solid fill right here. Oh, I tried to do it with just a line. need to have a... And notice how I don't have it perfect here. But um, it's pretty close. 
I'm using my mouse button. It's not doing a very good job of picking my endpoints and doing stuff. Let me do a better job. Open the end point. There we go. And that one's going to be black solid fill. And I might, I might have too many lines in here. Watch. Oh, there's too many lines. I've got intersecting lines and stuff. So I got to find all these intersecting lines. I'm just going to, and I'm doing this on purpose to show you if you make a mistake. So go there, and I'm going to just hit a delete. I highlighted the whole thing. Let me get it right. I'm going to start at a corner, move up to a corner, and I want it to be a solid black fill. Go. Now I've got this one. This is actually part of like a hex box. My annotate. I have to try to. I have to get it on the box one. Using my scroll. That looks pretty good. And that one, I don't know what that one is, but I think it's actually made from diagonal crosshatch. And I think that'll do it. Yep, there it is. Now, here's a weird one. This one isn't actually a hatch. There's nothing there. So I need to do what's called a detail line for that. Here's the one weird piece. I need detail line. Because the hatch is... I could make a white hatch, but I'm just putting a detail line. Yep. I'll hit escape just to get out of it. Now, my... Now, this, this one's going to be concrete. That's concrete. And I don't get the X's yet, so I'm going to have to put those in later. There's my concrete. And that's, and this is great. You're, you're going to learn what these things mean. There's my concrete. And look, it doesn't look exactly the same, but that's a very typical concrete. Look, and then I've got one more detail line to do. Get it in there. And that's good. I, You know, I can put those little lines in the side and everything, but that'll be close enough for me. Now, I can put these all over on the right again, or I can move this sort of out of the way so that I know what I'm supposed to be drawing. And which one goes with which. And then I can just eliminate that. Because I don't need it anymore. Oh and look. I had a weird kind of line there. I had it set as center line. So if I get rid of it. And I just can make it regular old lines. Now they're regular old lines. And that's fine like that. Either way. It doesn't matter. Okay, so now I need to write those arrows. And you've done that before. And so I can start with my text. I can start with an arrow. And, I, and you could also leave this over here and just start putting the arrows over on the other side. But it's an arrow with two segments. And this one, it starts somewhere up there. Comes over to here. And now look, this says quarter inch text. Let's see, I think I wanted an eighth inch probably and that should say click click and I'm gonna do it all in caps a zoom in here now I have to write it finish floor covering and I can leave it sticking all the way out like that or if I want to I can hit enter to make it two lines and then I have to kind of like face it a little bit I think there's enough room on my drawing to make it one line so there's finish floor covering let me do my next one on here my next one says 
concrete floor slab slash mat foundation. And look, if I get up here and then come down, it lets me kind of see what I'm doing there. Kind of found that spot. And I look until it's kind of level and even looking because it looks nicer that way. And then I click and move out to my next one. And that's going to say B. Zoom out and use my wheel so that I can see. Concrete floor. Then I'll do enter in a couple of spaces. Lab slash mat foundation. I just click outside here somewhere. Click. Wow, isn't this so cool? My next one. Oh, reinforcing steel. I need to figure out how to draw my reinforcing steel now. That's annotate. So I can make a detail line that's kind of dashed. I'll come up here and I'll put it on my center line one. And I'll just draw a line across here. Doesn't have to be exactly the same as what they've got. And now I'm going to put a piece of quarter inch text and I'll just put an X there. Right. And it's got to be regular old text. X. And then I can move it up right where I want it to go. Now I can do the copy command or I can just keep doing that. I can, if I hit copy, I just click somewhere and move it, move it. And, and I'm not, you, you know, I just want you to get the idea. So if it's not exact, that's just fine. Something like that would be fine. So now that one's called reinforcing steel. Go back to my text, my little arrow. And part of this is just trying to get the idea of how, how precise do you need to be? Do you want to be? That looks like it's kind of at the same angle, the arrows. I like, if I can, to get the arrows the same. It's not really required. Let me do that again because I see I was on my wrong size text. An eighth. Looks pretty nice. That looks pretty nice. C, pren, parentheses, rein, forcing, steel, also known as rebar. Now these two seem to be all one thing together. So I'll put my my arrow somewhere over there. Again, I'm lining it up, getting it as you know, they don't have to be even. Um, just something that looks kind of nice. So this is protection board and enter drainage. Click outside somewhere. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. I needed the D. So I'm going to double click. Click at the front. D. Pren. So you can go back and change things. And I think I want here. I want a couple of um, faces here. Still looks better. Just looks better. I'm just kind of cruising through these a little bit at a time. I have text again, my leader text. Now this one shows it going downward, so I'll go ahead and do the same thing. And I can't see the arrow if it's in the middle, so I'm going to put my arrow over here to the side. But I am going to try to line them up nicely. And um, Revit is nice for that. This says uh, D, not F. D E E water proofing enter a couple of spaces membrane
Now I have my mud slab and compacted earth. And again, I'm going to try to get things to line up and be kind of the same angle. They don't have theirs that way, and, and it's not really a requirement. But it, I think it looks better. Mud slab or compacted earth. I'm getting close. Now, this one, I, I love it. Compacted granular papillary break. This, this is, you know, whoever drew this is a little pretentious, maybe. You could just call it gravel. <laughs> Compacted granular papillary break, and I need my letter at the front, P. EFG. And sorry about that little interruption there. I'll go take care of them shortly. And here we've got. No, actually, this is just natural earth. This is the undisturbed ground. And there we go. Now I've got now I've got a very nice detail that and you can see I did work. I did the effort. I got the things done on it. And so that's my work. Even though I took the information from another image. This is now my work that I get to use in uh, a proposal or a submittal that is mine. So now it needs to come down and get onto the Thing here so here we go double click on on your on your sheet go find that and put it in if you can't find it you can right click and add a view and all the views show up and you go oh that's the one that's a really nice way to do it look at that and look it did fit pretty well I think my selection of uh, 14 inches wide came out pretty good Okay, so now I have a a pretty pretty good detail for what you're going to expect the contractor to do. And I've got a couple of issues to go back and fix. I can see right here, double click, get in front of it, and a couple of spaces. And you know, I'm not gonna have a big cow if, if you don't get that right. But if you'd like to start practicing getting um, your work at a really nice level that that somebody would want to hire you for, you can start doing that. And when I go back, you'll notice that those changes have been made. That's the beauty of Revit. You can really do this very, very well. So you can see we've progressed from at first, you were just making changes to ones that were there. Last week, you got an opportunity to uh, work on putting images in. Now you've put images in and done a little bit of a um, little bit of of uh, text work annotation. By the end of this course, you're actually going to be able to build a simple building in Revit and um, and have a little bit of knowledge about. What you're doing so there we go that is of course now uh, my goal would be to take a snip of it and put it into my work in um, in here right this is what I'm trying to do slab on grade flooring system detail Oh, that didn't work. Where's my snip? I used the wrong snip.
what happens when you get a bunch of these all running all at once. There we go. And, and you can do more work on this too. You could put some annotations in about what you did, right? On how you did these, if you felt like it. You don't need to, but remember, you'll want to get your Revit file and a link to it so that somebody knows. And this really should be your own Revit file. That would be the best. So you can go to your, your, your work and go find it. You didn't find the lecture record for Tuesday, huh? Let's see. There it is right there. Do I have the wrong one on there? Oh, there it is. I don't know. Uh, there it is. <laughs> it's right there. Uh, it's on there. So it's from week six. There it is. Perhaps I forgot to put that into the... Um, Playlist. Nope, there it is right in the playlist, too. So, uh, there you go. Hopefully, that'll that'll help you find it. Um, it's there. You just have two things to figure out and watch now. Sorry about that, that you weren't able to, to grab that. Could be that I didn't get it on until later in the day. Tuesday was pretty hefty. Hefty day, but it is there now, and this one will be put up there shortly for you. And remember, on Tuesday, well, you wouldn't remember because you didn't get to see it. Sorry about that. Uh, what we went over on Tuesday was uh, just kind of this whole general stuff, and then how to do um, these flooring costs. So that one's in there for you, the flooring costs. And now we've just done this one. I didn't do them in order. But we've got it. So, uh, so th but this is really cool work. You're you're getting a chance, and you're still you're talking about more and more and more. So, one of the things that you want to think about here is, you know, um, when you're doing a design, what's appropriate and what's needed. Uh, potentially, this mud slab or compacted earth is not needed. Some places pour right on top of the gravel. Your reinforcing steel has not been specified. We don't know if it's rebar or whether it's uh, wire mesh, um, whether it's tensioned or not. And it doesn't really say where to put it. So there would probably be an additional detail here. This is, this is something that's commonly done. Sometimes people take from... And I'm not positive they not positive I can get it from here. Let's see if it allows me to do a um a call out. Sometimes you would find something called a call out that would go to come on, I know I can get get that to move. There it goes. Sometimes you'll see something like that that lets you specify where this is going to go and give you more information and more work. So a big part of this class is learning about the structure of drawings and things like that. So... Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that now because we don't need it. But you might find some items like that. Let me get things put in the right space place. Um, so when we start talking about the material resources, we've given you some information about this compacted granular capillary break. It's gravel. And we've told you that when we're doing compaction, what goes on in the earth is very important and this will be a very specified mix 
and somebody will do a sieve analysis on it to make sure it's correct when you put it down. Maybe there will be compacted earth on top of it. Sometimes that's sand. Sometimes it's what they call a mud slab where it's um, a sort of sand and, and, and dirt and water. And they they kind of make it a mud so it's very, very level when it dries. So that's what they mean by mud slab or compacted earth. The waterproofing membrane, as we've seen, is um, usually just a roll of vinyl or something like that. And that's so that the pressure of the water that wants to come from the ground moving upwards if we're lucky enough to have water in our soil, um, doesn't just go right through the concrete and, and ruin the flooring. You need something to protect it. Now, um, when I was a youngster in Davis in the early 1960s, our water table, the standard depth until you hit pooled water if you were digging, was about five feet. And as a matter of fact, the, the, the city had rules against putting in swimming pools because it was very difficult and they would literally float out of the ground when it rained. So um, um, now we can have swimming pools all we want. Our water table is anywhere between a couple of hundred feet and a couple of thousand feet, depending on um, you know what type of water you want to get. Drinking water now is at about 1,500 feet. We have to drill 1,500 feet to get to water in Davis. So that's not a good sign for us. Um, so this, this vapor barrier is important. It keeps water from coming up from the ground through the concrete and into the area where your final finished floor is because, of course, that could make bubbles and delaminations and things like that. We've talked about the reinforcing steel and what that looks like. We haven't really talked about um, the, the matte foundation that might be there, but you can imagine that usually there's some cork or rubber or vinyl or something that um, often that eases the the pounding on the feet as you're walking now sometimes that is not there because you do want to be right down on the concrete especially if you're doing concrete stain or something like that okay so so there we go that's a little bit about that um and that's what goes on here on Tuesday, we talked about this here. Let's see what this one is. Uh, and this is your Minecraft, so hopefully you can get into that. That leaves us with a few things to talk about flooring systems, what it is, evidence that you've read, what's posted. So let's look and look at the posting again and make sure. And, and I'm hoping that next week I'm... I'm going to have sort of some review work for you. It may not be until may not be until week eight, because week eight we're going to do your um, uh, midterm exam. It's open book, open notes, open everything. Um, you just get to do it as you as if it were sort of putting together your your work. But you'll have a chance to see some really good stuff. And uh, there will be some calculations to do and some Revit drawing stuff to do. So, um, so that'll be kind of cool. And while we're doing that, we'll be introducing one of our projects. So that's coming up, I think, in week eight. Okay, so let's take a look here and see. Um, here's your reading list of what you're supposed to look over. And um, we, we talked about these on Tuesday quite a bit, but we didn't talk much about this. Okay. Um, and so let's, I, I just thought I'd look at these and, and sort of talk to you because we talked about penetrations and things like that. 
And I want to I want to look at one of these and see what it means and look at this and look at this. You can see they're always a little bit different. Always just a little bit different and you might even be looking at some of the some of these other ones here, you know, heating elements and things like that. But let's take a look at this one right here. And see how that compares to what we were doing before. Here's the gravel. Now here you can see there's the vapor barrier. So there's gravel, then vapor barrier, then concrete with wire mesh as the reinforcing steel. Let's see how that looks compared to this. Unexcavated ground. Of course, that's there, right? Here's, you're, you're going to, you're going to have to imagine that this is reinforcing ground or, uh, sorry, is um, unexcavated ground, gravel, vapor barrier, concrete. So it's a little bit different than this one. There is no mud slab or compacted earth on top of the granulated capillary break, the gravel. So you can see why these are sometimes a little bit different, and you might need to do something like get rid of this. I'm going to make a duplicate of it. Um, I did that wrong. And you might have to do something like this in your work, which isn't too hard to do. I'm going to move it. Um, this is really typical of what you do as a detailer. It doesn't take a lot, but it takes knowledge. It takes knowledge of reading and knowing what the engineer and the architect wants and then getting these types of things done to change it around for yourself. Okay, so this is just another version of it. This one is a little bit closer to what they had, but you notice they didn't have this either. So let's get rid of that one. I'm just hitting delete. Now I'm going to move these ones down. And I've got one extra line left. So now you can see I have now a detail that matches this. And I've got adhesive and then the, the flooring. And so if we look over here, you could change this to say adhesive. And now I have, I have a, a 2D detail that goes along with this. Okay, and we'll, we'll talk more about the rest of this when we do the walls and everything. But that's essentially what it is. Now you might say, well, why don't they, why don't they use this? You can imagine that changing this over and over again as you do minor changes to the detailing would be pretty difficult. So usually there's something like this that has everything in it, and uh, and then you just change your detail as needed. Okay, so there we go. That's a little bit of 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 reading this and comparing it. So here's a 3D view, 3D drawing, which I actually like. This really tells you more. You don't have to you don't have to learn to read drawings like this, right? If uh, if this was just there and um, it didn't have all the words, you would have no clue what this meant unless you already knew what it meant. And then what's the purpose of it, <laughs> right? It's not giving you any extra information. Okay. One thing that I might see that people would do is to show this being moved down and show this being moved down.
and then putting an annotation over here that said how far up it would be. As an example, one third from the bottom. Something like that, or maybe it's usually one third to one quarter. Let's make it one quarter from the bottom. And that lets them know that you need to put it down at the bottom. And what's really cool is I could put both of these drawings on here if I wanted to, or I could put another one on. I could put another sheet in. So there we go. That's a little bit about um, how you might want to look at these as you draw, as you work on them. Oop. Sorry, I did the wrong zooming there. Now I want to look at this and talk about it a little bit, just briefly, and then we'll be kind of done. So I'm going to use I'm going to use um, this one as an example. So if you have multiple pipes coming up through the floor, this would be the type of thing where you've got. Um, a hot water, a cold water, and then a sewage drain called sanitary drain. So those would all come up through one place in the floor. And instead of making three holes in your floor for these and putting them through, you would make one hole. And notice that there's room around them. Pipes have to have an ability to move a little bit. And also concrete does soak water, it wicks water, there's lots of weird chemicals in it. And so you usually want to have a gap between the concrete and your pipe. Now you might fill this up with some sort of that spray in goopy insulation stuff, uh, gap fill, or you might leave it open, or you might put dirt in there. Uh, all sorts of things that you can do. You should know that openings like this if um, if they're not well sealed or where pests like rats and mice and cockroaches come through. So people usually tend to try to seal it with something, but something that can move a little bit. Stuff moves. Floors move over time. And you can imagine if these were put in there really solid and the floor started to move, that you could break your pipes really easily. Um, if there's an earthquake, you can break your pipes really er easily. If these get hot and cold and hot and cold, you can crack your concrete. It will expand or freeze. Uh, maybe it maybe it it freezes and expands. So there's lots of lots of interesting design details to learn about as you get more and more involved in design and details. Um, but this is a very typical type one. Look, it says minimum two inches. They want two inches of gap so that things can move. And that's also so maybe you can get in there and get a wrench or a saw or a pipe cutter onto it. Should you need to get, you know, if something breaks, you have to be able to get in there with a tool. So all of these standards are there for you. You don't have to know them. You just have to know that you will have to look for them when it's your turn to do a bunch of uh, a bunch of details. So these are all kind of cool. This one's for uh, ducting, and they call it a sleeve penetration. Now that's an interesting one. So a sleeve penetration is where you literally you put a sleeve in that's rigid. Um, and then you'll drop your pipe through it later on. And the pipe will have a clearance to it. That's a really, really common way to go. Because it's clean, it's nice, it's easy to work with. And particularly for electrical uh, conduit, uh, it's really nice because you can, you can pull wires very, very easily. Okay? So that's just, I'm, I'm kind of showing how you might look at one of these. And then just start thinking, huh, what about it? It's, it's really a great skill 
to be able to look at a drawing and start asking questions and go look things up. And I know that takes a ton of time. And that's the one thing that many of us are lacking is a ton of time. But practice makes you faster and better. You can figure out how to use keywords and control F to find things. And, and even often you can um, look at an image and do a Google search for that image and then find out where it came from. So those are all things and that that's something you can go to the library and ask them to teach you how to do that. So there we go. That's what we've got for this week. We've got some Revit to do. You've got some reading to do and you have some calculations to do. And of course, we have some discussion posting. And this should take you somewhere between six and eight hours for the week and so i hope you are in a position to be able to do that and if not i hope you're in a position to be pretty quick at this so it takes you at the lower end four to six hours and if not you can always get a hold of me and let me know that you're having some troubles getting things done and we can talk about what we can do to help alleviate that okay there we go you've got it I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.